What's up, everybody? My name is Parasite. Welcome back to Challenging Celtic with Hearts. Today we have Hibernian in the last game of Challenging Celtic. The last game of the Scottish Premiership Championship group. This is it. This is the end. The final game. I want to I don't want to stream this out too long because I got a lot I want to show after the game, season recap, stats for the season, kind of series recap a little bit, but we are not gonna win the league unless we have some ridiculous goal difference swing, because Celtic got 57 goals difference. We have 51. There are three points ahead of us. So we'd have to win. They'd have to lose. And we'd have to have a really big goal difference swing. Don't think that's going to happen. But second place is a chance. We do have a chance for second place. We, we have the lead. There are two points clear of Rangers. All we need to do is win. And we go one better than we did last season and finish second place above Rangers. That'll be an accomplishment for us. So we played a couple games. Three games in total. Once against Kilmarnock, 3-0. All... No goals allowed in any of the games. So that's pretty good. So 3-0 against Kilmarnock. In the duel with a brace. Harvey Elliott getting his first goal for the club. A very good goal as well. Then the biggest game. A 2-0 win over Rangers. In the duel with Marcos Leonardo scoring. That was huge. Because if we didn't win that match, we wouldn't have gotten second. Like They would have they would have locked it up. So that was a big win. We then beat St. Mirren 2-0. They had to send off the 24th minute. But I mean, we didn't score until the 95th for the second goal. We were 1-0 up for most of the game. And we scored before the sending off. So it wasn't the best performance considering they were down to 10 men for almost an entire game and we couldn't score until the 95th minute. But we got the win. That's what's most important. Now we have Hibernian. Team I've got for that. Pretty much the team to be expected. Otisoe is back. He's in the lineup. Alfonso Souza makes the lineup. Andy Irving comes in because Bates has been just absolutely awful. He got a match last game. He got a goal last game. But before that, he was averaging a 6.3 in his last five. So I think you can understand why I benched him. He was just god awful, the worst player on the pitch every single time he played. And unfortunately, Marcus Leonardo has picked up a little bit of an injury, so he's not fully fit to start this match. I could have started him, but I'm, I'm going to go with Jamal Musiala. Probably will bring Marcus Leonardo in at some point, though, but we'll see. Musiala gets the start. That's first of the lineup. So let's get into the match. I say, come on, lads, we can qualify for the Champions League if we win here. Definitely, we we get our first Champions League qualification of the series. You could finish second place. That would be huge. Fantastic record against Derek McKinnon in your career. Why do you think that is? I've never been too sure, really. It must be a bit of luck in there somewhere. He's a good manager. Psychological advantage by have of maintaining such, maintaining such records. I think he has value. I'm confident we continue in the same fashion, yes. It's derby day. It's a tremendous occasion. The atmosphere is something to behold. It is a derby for the last match of Challenging Celtic. They're in fifth place. They can not They can go down to sixth, but that. I mean, they can fall down to seven. Can you fall down below, like, where you're at in the group? I'm assuming you can. I'm not sure how that works. I've never really spent too much time in a league that splits. So, not really too sure how that works. But Dan and Lundulu, of course, to mark the occasion, to mark the last game of the series, Dan and Lundulu has to score. It's written in the stars. And he does. He's so good. The best player of the series, without a single doubt. Bankovic, back to Alberto Moreno. Alberto Moreno with the assist. And then Dulu with a header. Good header. For a guy that's not too tall, he wins a lot of headers. Got good jumping reach. Got good heading. He's just the best player on the team. And he's been the best player on the team since we signed him on loan. For the first time. Which we never expected what he would be. He was just like a... We weren't even looking for a striker, really. He just showed up in our scouting report. And he's like, wow, he's pretty good. I mean, if I can get him on loan. Musiala's injured. Bruce Danko, though. Lists him to halftime. I think Marcus Leonardo deserves to come in this game. He's been so big the last two years for us. 1-0 at halftime. Guard against complacency. Let's bring on the legend that is Marcos Leonardo. They're both injured, so I might as well start one of the injured. Might as well start Marcos Leonardo. So. Hopefully he can get a goal and mark the occasion. He was he, our top goal scorer last year over in Lundulu. So. I mean, you got to actually kind of question whether, whether Inlandulu is the best player or Marcus Leonardo, but it's it's definitely Inlandulu. It's definitely Dan Inlandulu. For a guy with like seven passing, Inlandulu is an amazing player. He doesn't he just doesn't have to pass; he just has to shoot. Like when you got players like that, just tell do let them do the one thing they're really good at: run, shoot, head. That's what he's great at. Let him do that, and you can be successful. We have dominated Hibernian in this match. 11 shots to 1. They don't have a shot on target yet. They have 0.01 XG. Our XG isn't amazing, but I, mean, we've, I guess we haven't created the best chances. We've created a decent number of chances. 
80th minute. Otis always tired and on a yellow. Give him a standing ovation. Bring on Fabian Delph. And then last sub. You know, has not been pretty good since he came on, but probably take Elliot off against Saranda. She's one of our best, biggest signings we made in the series. I mean, obviously the biggest is uh, Afonso Souza, but I think he's the second biggest. So I think I'll bring him on for the last couple of minutes here. As long as they don't score. I mean, if they, if they do score, I'll probably will definitely bring him on, but actually, I don't know. Doesn't look like they're going to score, though. Leon, uh, Elliot's going to come off. Saranda's just going to come on. Leonardo's going to look for a goal. He's through. Ooh, he get, hits it off the defender's foot, though. Might not be the most impressive victory to end the season, to end the series, but it looks like it's going to be a victory, at least. We're 1-0 up in the 85th minute. I'd be very upset if we throw it away from here. Tell the team to focus. Start wasting time. I want to win the last game of the series. I want to get second place. I want to show an improvement from last season. I think even Rangers must be drawing, I believe. I'll have to check that because they're only on 80 points. Dan Inland Dulu to get a second to tie it to end all doubt. Dan Inland Dulu to score. He gets a brace in his final ever game. Of course he does. Souza out wide to Irving. Good ball in. Inland Dulu, great header from pretty close in. Let's look at the latest scores. Rangers are losing to Kilmarnock. 1-0. So we didn't even need to win, but we did it anyways. We could finish one point behind Celtic. <sighs> they must have drawn. Celtic must have drawn their match. We finished second in the Scottish Premiership. It's an improvement on last season. We showed a great spirit at this squad to be able to get so close. We've secured our qualification to the Champions League. We managed to grab a win today against Hibernian. What did you make of the game? It was a great result for us, but I'm especially pleased with the fans. We couldn't have done it without them. Andy Irving's no stranger to the rivalry. Definitely an extra center for them, and I think we all saw that today. He had a great assist. Four goals just behind Celtic. One point behind them. Even if we they'd lost, we wouldn't have had the goal difference unless they lost significantly. They drew nil-nil with St. Mirren. Musiala, one to three days. Qualify for the Champions League. Transfer budget of $7.58 million. That is significant. That's a pretty decent budget. Let's look what the finances look like. $8 million in the bank. I mean, don't have a whole lot of wage budget left. About 16000 But not bad. Might have been able to do something with that. Uh, but now, I think I'll just advance to the season review. I'll see you when we get there. Well, that didn't take long. We are here for the season review. No trophies, unfortunately, but it was still a good season. Transfers in. Philip Bankovich came in for on loan and played really well for us. Came in in January. Only got two goals, which is pretty disappointing because he's massive. I feel like he should be getting more corner goals, but good average rating. I'll take it. Musa Wage, very good signing for us. Six assists. 7.2 average rating. Cone, 1.8K. Is that what we really paid for Cone? We paid $1,800,000 for this guy. He was really good for us. 7.1 on average rating. 53 games played. Alberto Moreno, another good loan signing. 7.08. Musiala scored some big goals. 16 goals, 7 assists. Whenever Leonardo stopped scoring, Musiala came in and he started scoring. So we were... It was nice to have both of those guys. Harvey Elliott didn't really make much of a difference. I was hoping for more from him. Bate was very inconsistent. He was either really good or just the worst player you've ever seen. Delph was an average player, which is okay for what we got. Sarnich was a little disappointing. 1.5 million was what they could have eventually got. I think it started out with only 700k. But he was disappointing. He wasn't as good as I'd hoped he would be. Stevanovich was terrible. Unavar was terrible. Uh, Transfers out. Who am I left? I mean, no one significantly really left the club. Gary McKay Steven, but he barely even played for Falkirk. Demore, who played a little bit at the start of the series, barely even played for Falkirk. Wasn't good anyways. They expect us to qualify for the Europa League. We did one better. Qualified for the Champions League. Daniel Lindulu, top scorer with 30 goals. 
Seven draws, five losses on the season. Celtic got 11 draws, but only two losses. One to us, one to St. Mirren. One point behind them. Ah, so close. Biggest win was a 4-0 win in the Betfred Cup over Dundee. Match to remember was a 3-0 win over Arsenal. Absolutely. That was the best match of the series. A 3-0 win against Arsenal. Inland Dulu scoring a brace. Josh Knight scoring a goal. Goal of the season was in a 4-2. In the recent 4-2 loss to Celtic. Dan Inland Dulu's 60th minute goal. Let's check it out. I think I remember the goal. Picks it up in his own half and almost in his own half. Takes it past the defender. I mean, it's it's an all right goal. It's not goal of the season. Like, surely I've scored better goals than that. Surely. Uh, reputation has not changed. That's a little disappointing. Finished second in the Scottish Premiership. Sponsorships are exactly the same. Broadcast revenue went up a little bit. Corporate went up a little bit. Competition went up massively. We did have European football for the first time, so that's kind of why. Match day commercial went up. Biggest shirts are Souza, Sutar, Toral. I don't know about Toral. Boyce and Cone. See if this is how we like lined up. Leonardo and Lundulu. Walker was our, probably our best left mid. Otisoe, Bate, I guess. Saranich, I guess. Wage, Knight, Sutar, Moreno, Cone. It's about right for how we lined up for the majority of the season. Our manager of the month for September. In terms of the fans' awards, Dan and Lundulu player of the season. Of course it was. And Lundulu young player of the season. Of course it was. Cone signing of the season, 1.8k, very good bargain. Goal of the season we saw with Nundulu, top goal scorer, in Nundulu, 45 goals. Bate had the most assists with 15. In Nundulu, 9 player of the matches, highest average rating in Nundulu, passes completed for 90, Andy Irving. Most clean sheets, 29 clean sheets by Philip Cone. Massive, great season. Now let's look at some of the stats for the season. Team detailed. Average was at 60%. That's kind of ridiculous. We had 57, which is pretty good. Considering we're not really trying to get possession. We're just a much better team than a lot of these teams that we're playing. Uh, yellow cards, third and 76. Red cards, we had one. Uh, goals, we were second with 81. Two goals behind Celtic. Two more corner goals than them, though. Uh, goals per game, we had 2.13. Expected goals, 72, so wow, Celtic ridiculously better than expected. They were expected 66, they scored 83. Nearly 20 more than expected. Eight, uh, was it 16, 17 more goals than expected? That's ridiculous. We scored what? Nine more than expected? And then Lundula's ridiculous. Like, he was amazing this season. Celtic finishers must be ridiculous. Rangers took 13 penalties. We took seven. And the best cross completion by a margin. Second, third most crosses completed. Goals from corners, Rangers and us. Nine goals from corners. Direct free kicks, we had one. Indirect free kicks, we had six. Pass completion, third best. Passes completed, third most. That's surprising because we're not really trying to go short or anything like that. We're kind of, we have a normal passing range, so... We should have some long passes, some short passes. Clear cut chances, third, 36. Most shots for, most shots on target. Second best shots on target ratio. Tied for the best shots on target ratio, actually. That's pretty good. Conversion rate, not amazing, 13%. Most shots per game. Fouled the third most. Tied for the third most dribbles. Third most dribbles per game. Possession lost, third least. So, I mean, it, we probably, Rangers probably deserve to finish second with all these. I haven't seen these, but conceded the least. We conceded 28. Expected goals against 25. So we conceded three more than expected. So goalkeeping was pretty good. Didn't concede a single goal from corners. Our defensive corner set, setup is so good. Direct free kicks, we conceded two. Indirect, we conceded five. That's not good. Maybe I need to work on an indirect free kick defense because... I usually I leave it to standard, like default, and apparently that's not very good because that's a lot of goals from indirect free kicks. I just don't know how I change it. I mean, I will look at it, but tied for the most clean sheets with the Rangers with twenty one, second most fouls, most tackles won. Not a good tackles one ratio though. I guess we went for a lot of tackles, but not many blocks. Session one kind of lower lower half. Clearances, lower half. 
Interceptions, second most. Conceded four penalties, which isn't ideal. 258 shots against us. Celtic only 194. Only 89 shots on target. We had 125. Average attendance, the third best average attending. So let's go. 98% of capacity. 13 sellouts. Only the fifth highest in terms of highest attendance. But 10th for lowest attendance. Net transfer spend, we spent 966K. Celtics spent 11.23 million. Rangers spent. Rangers actually made 2.63 million. Salary, we are fourth with 6.93. Look at look at the difference. Celtic 43, Rangers 31, a six. We finished above Rangers. We had six million. They had 31. There's a little bit of a gap at the top. We were one point behind Celtic, and we are spending that little on salary. That is impressive. Player detailed. Uh Yellow cards, Lewis Bate, 11 yellow cards, Josh Knight, 7. Red cards, we only had one. It was Alfonso Souza. Player of the matches, Inland Dula with 5. Leonardo with 5. Distance covered, anyone? No. For 90? Oh, quite a few players. Univar, who, I don't know how he's on there. He's terrible. Toral, he's not very good. Jamie Walker, Alfonso Souza. Our winger's definitely running a lot. Andreas Pereira led the league in average rating. Inland Dulu third, Bankovic fifth, Michael Smith of all players seventh, Sutar, Josh Knight, Philip Cohn. The goalkeeper being on there is pretty ridiculous. Musawage. Uh, goals, leading goal scorer, Dan Inland Dulu significantly. Like, what is that? 12 more goals? 12 more goals than Marcos Leonardo, who is second. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Uh, expected goals, Dan on the Dulu, 20. He scored 10 more goals than expected. Leonardo scored three more goals. Or no, six more goals than expected. Musiala, 7.13. How many goals did he have? Nine. So two more goals than expected. Uh, in the Dulu goal every 101 minutes. The two best goal scorers in the league again this season. In the Dulu, most shots. Most shots on target. Bate was one of the best shots in target ratios. And the dude was pretty good for how many shots he had. Conversion rate, Bate, 25%. Leonardo, 23%. Shots for 90 in Lindulu. Free kick goals. We had two, I think it was. One by Lewis Bate. Thought we had two. Maybe we just had one. Assists, Giannis Haji and Kent and Liam Smith and Andreas Pereira. Bate with 10, though, is up there. Walker with 7 is up there. Harvey Elliott actually had 6. That's actually better than I thought he was. He's only here half a season. He still had six assists. We had quite a few assists around everyone. Michael Smith was six. Andy Irving was six. Assists per 90. Bate, Walker, Smith, all up there. I'm surprised that... How is Harvey Elliott not up there? He only played half the season. I guess because he only played half the season. He didn't have a whole lot of games played. So He passes. Bate with 98. Walker was 76. Irving was 74. Pretty good. He passed for 90. Jamie Walker. I don't know how he's so good, but he is. Clear-cut chances. Bate, Smith. Michael Smith, seven clear-cut chances created. My, uh, do you can't, is a throw-in count as a clear-cut chance created? Because if so, that's how. Bate with a lot of passes attempted. Pass completion. A lot of our players. Finish our defense. Crosses completed. Nobody. Completion percentage, a lot of our players. Dribbles. Who's our best dribbler? Saranich. Dribbles for 90, Saranich. Offside, Inland Dulu and Leonardo up there. Fouled. Who's fouled the most? Inland Dulu. Uh, defending, I don't think we're going to be on. Alberto Moreno, third most tackles won. Not bad. Otis Zoe up there. Bait up there. That's surprising. Uh, tackles per 90, Otis Zoe, 4.08, pretty dang good. Walker, actually that's surprising. Alberto Moreno, Musa Wage, Michael Smith. Mistakes leading to goal. Musa Wage, two mistakes leading to goal. Same for Nasi Unavar. And it's pretty bad for a winger to commit a mistake leading to a goal. Like, that's how you know you really screwed up. He tackles Alberto Moreno. He was great for us. That was a great signing on loan. 
interceptions, Josh Knight, John Sutar, Alberto freaking Moreno, best defender on the team. Josh Knight, a lot of clearances. Don't have any more shots blocked now. Who committed the most fouls? Louis Bates, Otisoe, Moreno, Delph, and Lindulu. Conceded, Philip Cone conceded 28 goals in 38 matches. I'll take it. I'll take it. That's pretty dang good for a guy I, I bought for 1.8K. He had tied for the most clean sheets. No, he had the most clean sheets. 21 clean sheets. 0.74 conceded per 90. Uh, held, I don't really care about. I don't really care about held or parried, but penalty saved. He saved one of four penalties. And he had the third best save ratio at 77%. That's not amazing, but it's pretty good. Like, high, usually, like, low 80s is amazing. Like, great. Mid 80s is just out of, like, world class. Low 80s is really good. High 70s is pretty good. Mid 70s is okay. Low 70s is bad. So, he's high 70s. He's okay. He's a decent, decent shot stopper. Good enough. But that's going to be it. That is about everything. I'll go through the past couple seasons just to show how we how our journey went. Started off in the championship. We got knocked out in the League Cup semifinal. But other than that, we won almost every single other game. Did not lose a single game. Went unbeaten in the Scottish Championship to get promoted to the Premiership. First season, finished third. Lost our first game of the season. Then went on to have a pretty good season overall. Bad kind of stretch in here. Really bad stretch in here. That's what that's what gave us no chance to win the league, this run right here. But it was a solid season overall. To finish third in our first season back in the Scottish Premiership is pretty good. Then this last season, again, lost our third game of the year, but then went on a ridiculous winning run in the league. Didn't lose again until we had this another terrible run. Two games against Celtic in there, but just that lost us the league again. We had two terrible runs in our last two seasons that lost us any chance of winning the league. If we beat, like, if we beat St. Mirren here, we win the league. If we beat Hibernian, we, obviously if we beat Celtic, we're going to win the league. But just a terrible run. Beat Kilmarnock, we win the league. Very disappointing. Had another pretty poor run in here, Celtic Rangers, but, and then Celtic again. We just didn't do good enough against the big two. I mean, Rangers we did all right against. Let's look at all our matchups against Rangers. All our pass means. Who had the... Let's see, we had four losses, four wins, and one draw. So, very even between us and Rangers, really. And then, Celtic. Four wins, six losses, two draws. Dang. Well, I think that's going to be it. That's going to be the end of Challenging Celtic. I don't have anything else I need to show. Daniel Lindulu, obviously player of the series. 30 goals, 24 goals, 30 goals. Amazing. But that's going to be the end of this episode. If you made it this far, why don't you like the video, subscribe, and click the bell. The links to all my socials and my Twitch are in the description. I really appreciate all your support. Thank you all for joining me. And I'll see you next time.